I was going to say, and that brings me over to Raids and Ashes, because, I mean, Raids is another interlocking thing, right? Like, you become known for uh, attacking someone's caravan, and then you see that person while you're out trying to, who knows, maybe you're just, like, passing by, and you see that person trying to raid, and now you're like, well, this is an open-world boss, so why not go up and be able to PvP them in the middle of them trying to raid down this boss? Um, and this comes from... <laughs> Are uh, you slash the real party pooper <laughs> on, <laughs> on Reddit um, and was talking about, you know, how raiding is something that they're looking forward to in Ashes, despite being a more PvP centric player. They like how Ashes is going to, uh, in a way, have an ability to meld the two in certain instances. And uh, they think the most important or interesting thing is that it seems like raids won't be just for max level players. Um, what do you think about how open world raids and PvP will potentially clash uh, or create an interesting gameplay experience, especially since you're into PvX? Yeah, uh, I think it's probably the most interesting as for the mixture of both. Um, I know Vertex has said this a few times that uh, it takes away from a dedicated PvE experience as for a raid boss, the mechanics, um, and where you can't do some of the things because there's anticipation that it may be zerged, it may be uh, attacked at some point, so are you limited to what you really can do with that encounter? Um, where I do find that incredibly important for certain content, but I also find with the PvX content that it creates and not everybody likes this. It creates a looking over the shoulder moment um, where the timing and the preparation is maybe as important as it would be if it was a uh, organized instance based uh, encounter as well. Uh, when you're in into the dungeon, you need to make sure that you are fully geared up, health pots, food, whatever the, the, the content needs you to be. But you may go into a regular dungeon, instance dungeon, where you just can kind of be there and do the content. But this, I think, with that anticipation of something bad could happen, doesn't always happen, but that coming to that content and being afraid, sometimes exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, I think reading is going to be interesting. It'll be interesting, and I'm, I'm open to see how it plays out. But uh, ultimately, I think that it's going to be um, raids of people who are good at PvP that are going to succeed at the PvE conquest. And yeah. to me, that just it feels kind of like awkward because even even in games that were full. Uh, like the older stuff, like Ultima Online, even. Like that was just it was a PvP game that had some PvE stuff you could do. And that to me is is how a lot of these games feel where it's, you know, open PvP in the PvE zones. And ironically, uh PvP objectives are cordoned off so that only those participating are actually involved. So they can't be interfered with, but the PvE objectives can be interfered with. And it always just kind of feels lopsided. Yeah. Um, so that those that enjoy a certain kind of content just aren't able to because it's a PvX environment. And yet a PvP environment can't be a full PvP environment because they're gonna they're gonna section it off and say, here's your area to do only the thing that you want to do. <laughs> yeah. And uh I responded to Eiffel both, but before I do that, Gandalf, first off, thank you for the level two uh train, the hype train. Appreciate that. Uh, or the almost level two. Yeah, com complete at level two. So thank you for that. Um we also met our goal for our mm -hmm. sub goal. So, oh my gosh, thank you. Um, and then Gandalf says, get those taverns built near dungeons. We need food and buffs. <laughs> um, thank you. And uh, I hide my PvE activities if I can, yeah. And then um, Eiffel says, open PvP carries the risk of a few ruining the fun of the many. Here I am. I'm curious to see how Steven wants to solve this. I've already experienced a punishment system for player killers in some games. It didn't work in any of them. And I ended up uh, responding saying, you know, as someone who used to do uh, kind of more like hardcore PvE content, I'm also curious, you know, because I'm used to that being more segregated. And I 
don't mean to go back to Roar again, but I just happened to be listening into him earlier while I was working on some stuff for tonight. And he was talking about like, that's actually why his interest in Ashes is not to be as PVE focused. Um, because with things like World of Warcraft, you know, you have that instance dungeon where you can go extremely hardcore with the PVE and the rating and things like that. And um, in Ashes, we see Tumok has like three skills, which granted, Steven has mentioned as you fight Tumok, etc. Like um, the AI is supposed to kick in and adjust like the difficulty. Um, but how hard, like this is something that we find ourselves asking time and time again, how hard truly can it get in Ashes of the Creation with it being open world PvP um, and rating? So like, I think that's something that a lot of us are waiting to see how um, A2 feels while we're testing it. And um, really, because I, I can look at somebody playing, you know, fighting against Tumok on a dev stream and be like, oh, that doesn't look nearly hard enough or, oh, that looks so easy, but the people PVPing us are just, you know, destroying us. But um, it's one of those things like I feel like we don't really know until we get in there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so a further question on this, by the way, is. Do you feel and, and this is something that I, I literally just got done replying to somebody on our YouTube uh, that made a comment and this this came up. Um, not exactly this, but the, the same kind of idea. So how much of a kingmaker system do you really think that the, this type of setup is to have full tilt raids in the open world? Because in order to down a raid, you have to compete with other people, other guilds, other uh, random groups, uh, other uh, guilds with multiple raid um, compositions within that area. Like they could have one that's there just to be a PVP uh, door gatekeeper. And then another group that's uh, intended to be the go in there and actually take on the boss uh, repeatedly for as long as they need until they can take it out. Um, but if you're not in a guild that's going to be able to have, you know, 120 people, so you have two two raids to guard the door and one raid to complete it and just cycle cycle through the three of those, you know, um, you kind of have to be overpowered um, or out leveled or out gearing the content to be able to guarantee you'll be able to get it. And even that guarantee is not exactly a guarantee just because of timing, spawn timers, uh, accessibility, because if you're the one the one raid group, encountering two that are blocking a door you just can't get there but yeah. to, for, to to get to a reasonable amount of success or uh, uh, possibility of success you have to basically outgear that content now once you start beating them you're going to snowball because you'll be able to get better gear you get the better components to make better gear come back again and get that one or to go and do the others because you'll you'll outgear and outperform others mm -hmm. like do you viral? Do, would you see that as being an issue, or is that kind of a kind of a worry wart? Not really going to be an issue, do you think? So, it, in my perfect world of ashes, is that the world is big enough. It, I, I can't say it will be the the intent of, for the amount of people they have. The expectation on the side of the world is that it's big enough that multiple people should be trying to do multiple content to hopefully spread that around if the possibility is there yeah I, yes absolutely if it's too small and we have large large guilds that don't have anywhere else to go it's going to be curtailed that way and that's the unfortunate part and my hope is that it is as large as they're they're saying it's going to be um that alliances are important and the tools are really good so then yeah a smaller guild can be part of a larger guild to do that content with them while doing some of the smaller content. Cause like, I mean, Steven says a lot of things and I, and I hope them to be true because that's what I'm really looking forward to. But you have the, you know, three to five man, eight man, maybe multiple group then raid. And then you have multi raid or whatever the case may be. But I'm really hoping that the content spread out enough that these things are the minority ish or, uh, happenings versus the majority happenings and that's my hope but if it's not big enough i do feel what you're saying is a potential for sure yeah 
And I am actually responding currently to Eiffel saying this, like Eiffel says, this forces you to organize yourself in a large as number of as possible. And it's definitely not a bad option, but at the end of the day, you often move alone in a huge world. And I think this is maybe Steven and team's goal for convincing people to play together with other people. After all, it's an MMORPG, uh, not a solo RPG. <laughs> um, and I'm not doing that to like pick on anybody because I, I tend to play a lot of MMOs solo, especially because, you know, your friends drop off, your friends leave. And I think a lot of the things that they're working towards is not having the insta queue and things like that um, to make it so that you have to work with others to get things done. There's collaboration in order for progress. And um I, I'm hoping that this works out. I don't know how well it will work out, but I'm hoping it works out. And this will be my first time experiencing because I, I had a, a thread at one point that says my PVX is not your PVX, meaning like my definition of what it is is not exactly the same as yours. Mine might be a little bit more PVE friendly. Yours might be more PVP friendly. Um, or, you know, uh, someone might have like the ideal strike balance between the two where it's everything is equal proportion. And... Um, Regardless of what that is, someone was mentioning, you know, uh, I sounded like somebody who played MMO solo and I often had to because people left, but I preferred, I always tried joining guilds and groups and things like that. And then eventually those people just, you know, meandered away and it was just for tech and I <laughs> mm. <laughs> looking for hopefully somebody else to play with. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, th there. I think that's where... Ashes is going to be very unique. There's going to be reasons to be a small, tight-knit guild and reasons to be a larger guild. And I feel like there's going to be different offsets and perks to both. And I, I don't know. It's one of those things that I can't really express my thoughts on it based on my past because I've never experienced anything like that. Um, and I'm, I'm anticipating it. Um, but yeah, Abra says large guilds will have programs to assist and organize casuals. Their node's success is dependent on it. And I feel like at the end of the day, that's a big point, right? Your node is dependent on you working with other people. And nodes have, uh, I think at max level, three patron guilds. So yeah. Um, but I'm going to actually, this other one, I don't think fits very well with it. Um, this is no. Yeah, <laughs> it was one of those like I thought it might be interesting, but it's like these are more suggestion for topics, not like, you know, adamant. Uh, yeah. I actually think I'm going to for a bit. Yeah, real quick, um, before we move on, though. Um, oh, OK. Yeah, uh, Fupo would actually raise a point saying not everybody is intended to finish all the stuff. Uh, it's not mm -hmm. supposed to be everyone will complete everything. Some will, but probably a small percentage. And that's that's a fair point based on the game design intent. And that's yeah. kind of why I'm worried about uh, being able to even um, experience, maybe not complete, but even experience some of it. Because if you add the little Kingmaker system where if it's if it's that difficult to access and, and reach and do it and you don't get those materials, then you're not even going to be able to have a chance to to complete some other stuff because other other guilds are going to be able to dominate it strictly because they have the materials to make the better armor, to make the better yeah. gear, to make the better weapons. And if they don't freely share those items, then nobody else will have that gear. So they can continue yeah. to dominate until they feel that they need to make more money by selling the, the, those items out because they've already outfitted their entire guild with all of that gear. Yeah. Until then, they're furthering their dominance by not sharing those items. And then yeah. they can choose and pick whenever they just don't want to clear content and let somebody else get into it. So yeah. that's 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 part of the fear that I have there is that um, once once one strong guild gets in there, they they might not let go just because that's where all the all the things are coming from to make the higher end gear. 